Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I think this is my 18th time trying to record this intro, so let's see if this is the magic number. In this video, I'll show you how to add line art to your 3D objects by using a blank grease pencil object and applying the line art modifier to it. And I'll go through all the edge options you have. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe. And 18 was the number. I'll see you in the video. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Blender and I've got four 3D objects. And I just want to show you examples of how the line art modifier will work on these. So I've got a couple different shapes. So the first thing I want to do is if I render this, you can see that I don't have any um, lines at the moment. So in order to just get the most basic of line work on this, I'm going to hit shift A while in object mode and go to grease pencil blank. Now again, if I hit render, you can see we don't have anything on here. So I'm going to select my grease pencil object. I'm going to click on the modifiers, click add modifier and choose line art. So there's three types of source types you can use, collection, object, and scene. So I typically use collection from an organization standpoint, because then if I want to define separate lines or materials or things like that, I can on a per collection basis. But if you just want the entire scene to have the same look, you can choose that, or you can choose a specific object. So for this instance, I'm going to use collection and I'll go up here and right click and choose new collection or change the name to 3d objects. I'm going to drag in my four objects. So I'm going to go back to my grease pencil object and I want to choose collection 3d objects as my collection. And the next thing I need to do is choose a layer. So with my grease pencil object selected, I'm going to go down here to my grease pencil properties and click on that. And you can see here's our layer. So you can make different changes here if you want to and choose different layers. For now, I'm going to leave this basic. Then I'm going to go back to the modifier, choose it. And then under materials with grease pencil object selected, I can go down to the materials tab. And I currently only have one material. So for now, I'm going to add another one. So I'm going to click this plus symbol, click new. And then I'm going to change the stroke to red. And now I'll use this example in a second. So I'm going to go back to my modifier and I'm going to choose black. So now you can see we instantly have lines added. Now you can see the Suzanne object has more line work added to it because it's more complicated. You can see underneath those selections, we have line thickness. So if I drag that out, you can see how that works. And that is across all objects within that collection. I can also change the opacity and bring that down to lighten that up. So now if I click under materials and change that to the red material, you can see that updates to that material. Now the way to really control this is the edge types. So currently I have a few that are automatically selected. I want to turn off all of these. So the first one I want to turn on is contour and contour is making a line around the curved edges of an object. So you can see I have this around the tops of the torus, around the curving parts of the Suzanne monkey, around the edges of the icosphere. And this is all based on the camera. So currently if I go behind these, you can see I don't have any lines. But if I were to move my camera, I would. So as an example, I'm gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna swing it around. And you can see the lines moving when I do that. So now if I turn this around and then go to the back of them, you can see now it's generating lines on the back side of the object. So the lines are based on where your camera is. So I'm going to turn off contour and the next one I'm going to turn on is crease threshold. And crease threshold bases the line work on the angle that you set. So if I drag this down, you can see those changing on the monkey model. And if I increase it really high up, you can see it's really affecting the other models. So this one you'd have to kind of play with a little bit to get what you want. And it really depends on the model. So let me uncheck that. Now intersection, if I turn this on, you probably won't see anything. And that's because that's where 3D objects intersect. So I'm going to grab my cone and drag it over. 
Now you can see I'm getting a line where those objects come together. So that one's helpful and I use it quite a bit. Okay, for the next one, I want to show material borders, and this is where materials come together on an object. So I'm going to turn that on. Then I'm going to select my torus, and I'm going to go to materials, create new materials, change this to a blue. Now you can see if I go to my material preview, it's blue. Now I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to turn on x-ray mode. I'm going to select these top faces. I'm going to get in face mode. Now I'm going to click plus to create a new material. Click new, change this to a green. And I'll hit assign. And if I go back, you can see I now have that assigned. So I'm going to go to object mode. And now you can see I have a line where those materials come together. So that's how that one works. So I'm going to go back to my modifier with Grease Pencil Object selected and turn off that. Now the next one is Edge Marks. And this is where you designate which edges get a line. So I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to select the cone and go to Edit Mode. I'm going to turn off X-Ray Mode. And in Edge Mode, I'm going to click on this one, this one. I'm going to hold Shift, Shift. Shift. Okay, so I've got a few edges selected. I'm going to right click and down here at the bottom, I'm going to select Mark Freestyle Edge. Now, if I go back to object mode, you can see those lines are now there where I marked those edges. And if you ever want to clear those, you can see they're green. If I click on that one and right click and go to Clear Freestyle Edge and then go back to object mode, you can see that one's no longer getting a stroke. So that's how that one works. And I think the control on that's very helpful. I use that one a lot as well. Now with the grease pencil object selected, I'm going to go to the modifier and turn that one off and then turn on loose. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to click Shift A and add a plane. And I'm gonna bring that forward. Now we'll go to edit mode. Vertex mode, I'm going to select this first vertex and hit delete. I'm going to delete vertex. So now if I go back to object mode, you can see I have that line. So that might be helpful if you're wanting to have just a stroke added somewhere. Uh, you could just draw that with the draw tool and grease pencil. But if you wanted to generate that automatically, that's one way you can do it. So again, this is just creating a line where there isn't a face. Next one I want to discuss is light contour, and this generates lines where the light and shadows are separated. So for example, I'm going to turn on light contour, and then under light reference, I want to click that and select my light. Now if I go to my rendered view, you can see what that looks like. So if I turn sideways, you can see I've got this line right here where I've got shadow on one side of the cone and then I've got light on the other in the same way for the icosphere. So that's how that works. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to click cast shadow and you can see where the shadows that are being cast. Let me go to camera view. The shadows being cast have lines around those. So in order for those two to work, light contour and cast shadow, you have to designate a light. And if I move this light around, the shadows will change. So you can see the lines moving with those shadows. And the same for light contour. If I go back and turn it on. You can see how that line works moving with the light. Okay, the last thing I want to discuss is how to make different objects look different within the same scene. So I'm going to turn off light contour. You can see we don't currently have anything in the scene. And I'm going to delete this plane. And then I'm going to delete this light. So I'm going to go to the torus and I'm going to go to the materials tab and delete these materials. So currently I have 3D objects selected. So if I go to grease pencil, 
and select the modifier. And I'm gonna minimize this modifier and I'm gonna change this to large stroke. And we'll go to add modifier and add another one. And we'll go ahead and add another one. So this one, I want to name it small stroke. And I'll come back to the last one in a second. So if I go to large stroke and I select contour, threshold, and just those two. And I currently have 57 as my line thickness. I'm going to bring that down a little bit and then change the opacity to more of a gray. And up here, I'm going to right click and select new collection and double click on that and change that to small stroke. And I'm going to double click this one and change it to large stroke. I'm going to drag the Icosphere and Suzanne into the small stroke one. Now you can see if I go to my modifiers and select grease pencil, if I go to small stroke, I can select the small stroke collection, the layers, the same layer I chose before, and then the black material. So now if I decrease the line thickness here really far down and I go to the top one and really increase it, you can see within the same scene, I have objects that have large strokes and objects that have small strokes. So that's a way you can control that. Another option would be, say I have this object here, the cone, and I go to my grease pencil object. And I'll change this from collection to object, and I'll select the object and change it to cone. And then we'll go to the small stroke and do the same thing, so object, cone. So now if I go to my edge types, I can select just edge marks. In the large stroke, I can just keep contour and threshold. Now you can see within the same object, I have a large stroke around the outside. And then where I've marked those edges, I have a thin stroke. So that way you can have one object that has different types of strokes on it. So now in the cone, I'm going to go to my last line art modifier that I've added. I want to change the object to cone, change the layer to GP layer, change the material to red. And if I go to my edge types, you can see if I unselect all these, but edge mark. Now I have red edges. And if I go up here and change this to contour, you can see I have three types of edges on here now. So if I lower the opacity a little bit more of the large stroke, Change this to material preview. You can see I have a thin solid stroke here. I have a larger see-through stroke on top of that. Then I have the red stroke designated by the edge marks I made. So you can really layer up the number of strokes you have on 3D objects to get a certain look that you're going for. And the last thing I'll mention is that if I go to grease pencil and I go to draw mode, and if I select my draw tool, and you see I have red as my material, so if I go up here to the top where my origin is, I can select surface and I can change that offset to 0 0.001. And on my strength, I'm going to change that all the way up to one and turn off the pin pressure. Same for radius. So now you can see I can draw on the surface of the object. And if I rotate around, you can see it's sticking to it. So that's another way to add strokes to your 3D objects. And let me see what that looks like if I bring that offset up to 0 0.01. Okay, that looks better. You can see it's kind of disappearing into the 3D object on this, so you may want to be careful about how low you set the offset. So that's the last way you can add strokes to your 3D objects. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and let me know if there are certain videos you would like to see in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.